Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ben Kieser with Applied Flow Technology, and I would like to welcome you all to this uh, wonderful webinar on a Friday. Hope that everyone made it through the week all right, and that everything goes well for you all over the weekend. Anyway, uh, I'm excited to present to you all today, and uh, thank you again for joining me. This webinar is being recorded, so if you are listening in live right now, I have provided a PDF of my presentation for you. If you are listening to the recording at a later time, then you can uh, contact me directly at benkeiser at aft.com, and I will be happy to email you a copy of my presentation. That's B-E-N-K-E-I-S-E-R at AFT.com. And so uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be doing a presentation on how to automate your pipe sizing calculations using AFT Fathom and AFT Arrow. Uh, we have some really new and exciting stuff going on here at AFT. And I'm very excited to be able to tell you all about that today. And so uh, without further ado, give me just one more second here. And uh, we will uh, jump into the content. So uh, hold on one second here. I'm trying to pull up my uh, our website to show you something. And... My computer is, there we go, now it's working. All right. So uh, really quick, if you want to learn more about the different products that we offer, you can go to our website, AFT.com. Under the products menu, our software overview gives you a really good high level of detail over the different products that we offer. And then if you go to any of the specific product pages, you can get many more details about each individual product. And so today we'll be talking actually a little bit about AFT Mercury and AFT Titan in the context of how they are relating to Fathom and Arrow. So uh, you can read more information about our products on our website. We also have several add-on modules that are available like the Goal Seeking Control Module, uh, XTS, SSL. We have a Goal Seeking Control Module for Arrow. We have a settling slurry and a pulsation frequency analysis module for impulse. Very soon there's going to be a new one for Fathom and Arrow, and that's what we're talking about today. It's going to be the ANS module, automated network sizing, and we're going to talk all about that this morning. So uh, some prerequisites that are really helpful for today's webinar, which I know that you may not have, uh, you certainly don't have a chance to go back and look at those before the webinar now, but I want to include the uh, links to where you can find them. So uh, there's a webinar that we did uh, a couple months ago, the top 10 AFT features you can't go without. Uh, that's really important. There's a webinar that we did on database management and customization a few weeks ago. That webinar talks to you about uh, all sorts of things relating to databases, how to create custom databases, how to share those databases with other users. And I wrote a tips and tricks blog series on databases as well. And you can find all of them here. And it's important to read the articles in this order. Um, and so uh, they uh, progressively uh, will uh, lead you through how to understand databases uh, in that direction. So be sure to read through those. And then finally, uh, last week, we did a webinar on cost calculations. And that was an excellent webinar, which we demonstrated how you can calculate the entire system costs in AFT Fathom and AFT Arrow for your piping systems. And you can account for material, installation, maintenance and energy costs and in that webinar i demonstrated not only the cost calculations themselves but i also demonstrated how you can actually build the cost databases from scratch 
And that's really, really important for getting into the automated network sizing module that we'll be talking about today. So uh, make sure that you definitely watch that webinar when you have the chance. I will be showing a little bit about how to build cost databases today, but in that one, I focus a little bit more on it. So be sure to uh, view that webinar. All right, some upcoming webinars that we have is going to uh, demonstrate a lot of our capabilities on the new automated network sizing module. It's not available yet. It is still currently in beta phase, but it should be available and on the market here in the uh, next couple of months. And it's going to take the capabilities that have been around in AFT Mercury and AFT Titan for over 15 years, and they're going to streamline and expand and integrate those powerful features directly into AFT Fathom and AFT Arrow itself. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to use, a lot more streamlined. It's not a whole separate software that you'll need to get. And so for an uh, upcoming webinar that I want to highlight is how to automatically size your network with the ANS module. So today, I'm going to focus on the very, very basics of the automated network sizing capability for ANS. In this next webinar on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2019, I'm going to show you how you can size much more complicated networks uh, very easily with ANS. And so that's definitely a webinar that you do not want to miss. So make sure that you go to our website. Uh, you can click on this link here and access it uh, in order to register. All right. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about what the difference is between design and analysis. Uh, is Fathom a design tool or is Arrow a design tool? A lot of people try to use AFT Fathom and AFT Arrow for design, and you can use it for design, uh, but uh, it can be a bit difficult to do that, and you'll understand why here in a minute. So if you were to use AFT Fathom for design purposes and pipe sizing, how would you actually use Fathom for that? What kind of process would you need to go through in order to size your piping system with AFT Fathom? Now, in addition to simply meeting your design requirements simply so your system works, what else should you keep in mind? And that's what we're going to talk about, uh, not only the cost of your system, but how to try and minimize those costs. So we'll get into that. It's important to size your pipes with a purpose, not just to meet your design requirements. But again, we want to be good engineers, and it's important to try and help deliver the best design possible to your clients. And so, uh, you know, it's important to go above and beyond in your role as an engineer, and I'm going to show you how you can do that today. And then lastly, we'll finish things off with an automated sizing example, uh, one with a spreadsheet and then one with using the new ANS module itself. So let's get into this here about analysis versus design. Let's talk about analysis first. So what is analysis? Analysis is typically what AFT Fathom and AFT Arrow are intended for. So in terms of analysis, what your input is would be your pipe sizes, your pump data, your fittings, resistance curves, elevation data, things like that. So you feed in that type of input, and then the output results that you get would be your flow rates, pressures, velocities, MPSH, uh, where are your pumps operating in their proximity to the best efficiency point. Um, basically, uh, your input leads directly to your output, and this certainly may or may not be representative of a best design. It may not even represent what's actually going on in your system. So if you are specifying your model with your various pipe sizes and pump data and you are matching exactly the as-built drawings of your piping network in the plant, your, flow, your resulting flow rates and pressures in the flow model may not necessarily match what you see in your measurements. They should match, but if they don't match, that means that there's a problem. Either something is not modeled properly 
or maybe you are not accounting for uh, corrosion or pump degradation. Uh, maybe there's a lot of fouling going on. Uh, maybe your system is pretty old and it has a lot of uh, scaling built up inside the pipes. Or maybe your flow and pressure measurements are not good. And so uh, this is all part of what you would be doing with an analysis is you specify input and then it gives you the output and that's what it is. Now let's talk about design. For design, you would essentially start with your required flow rates, pressures, velocities. Maybe you have uh, maximum velocities that you can't be over. Uh, maybe there's uh, maximum pressures that you have to be over or, uh, or underneath, I guess, rather. Uh, and then there would also potentially be uh, minimum pressure requirements that you might need for your system, uh, minimum temperature requirements. Uh, there could be any number of different requirements, and that is what you would start with. And then you would size your pipes and select your pumps in order to meet those requirements. So, yes, it is possible to use AFT Fathom and AFT Arrow for design purposes, but essentially what you're doing is you would start with assumed pump sizes, pipe sizes, fittings, etc., run your model and check what your output results are for flow rates, velocities, and pressures, do they match what your requirements are? Well, if they do not match, then you go back to changing your pipe sizes and pumps again. And so you keep going through that loop over and over again until your actual uh, input for your pipe sizes and pumps meets your requirements. So what's the issue and the difficulty with this for design purposes? Well, traditional piping system design is accomplished by significant amounts of iteration. And the uh, system is usually specified first, and then you review your results and then uh, make changes as necessary, and you keep going through that process. There's a lot of other software tools out there that talk about how they – can automatically size your piping system and they uh, what they're referring to is the guess and check method what they're saying is you specify input run your model check your results and then compare those results to your requirements and then change your sizes as necessary and it's a manual process okay AFT Mercury and AFT Titan are uh, the only products on the market that will do this process for you in an automated fashion that will help you come up with an excellent design versus everything else being manual. And so we're taking that technology and rolling it into Fathom and Arrow as a new add-on module. And so analysis is a sub-process of the design. So you're continually analyzing your system to see if your design will work. So typically here, you'll have rules of thumb that help guide you towards a, a good system design. Uh, but finding the, uh, your best design with uh, this iteration process is limited because there are so many different variables and parameters that you can change in your system in order to accomplish your design requirements. And uh, in reality, you just you do not have the time or the resources to go through a rigorous design improvement process. You know, from my experience that I've uh, had from working with different users is they will, uh, when they are designing a brand new system, is they simply start with the same design of the previous project. So it's kind of like where they would take the uh, Fathom model of the uh, project that they just finished designing, and that would be their starting point. So then they would design their system uh, based upon what the previous system was, and then they would just start tweaking things throughout the model until the design requirements are met, just meaning that, hey, the system works okay. All right, so uh, that's good, and it's really important to make sure that your system works, but should you stop there? Uh, and the answer is no, um, because once you get to a point where your system just simply works, 
it may not work the best. There could be other designs out there that will work better, improve your reliability a lot more, and reduce your maintenance costs, will be a lot more efficient and a lot more energy cost uh, uh, in, in te- uh, intensive with uh, savings. And so uh, when you're designing your system and you're sizing your pipes, it's important to size them with the intention of trying to come up with uh, as best design as possible. So by hand with manual iteration, you just don't have the time to do that. But when you have a tool like Mercury, Titan, or soon the new automated network sizing modules, it'll help you do that lickety split. So here's an example of how you might design a system by hand. So here I have a very simple uh, piping system where I am pumping water at 500 gallons per minute up to a discharge pond over a 200 foot uh, elevation change. So I have some various requirements in this system I need to meet. I need to size my pipes in order to keep the velocities under six feet per second. I need to make sure that my pump suction pressure is at least five PSIG. So coming into the pump, I need five PSIG. The way that I'm going to meet that requirement is by changing my tank height. So I'm going to size my liquid supply tank height in order to maintain that minimum pressure. And then finally, I need to find a pump curve. So this is a really good example that I do a lot of times for uh, lunch and learns or crash courses to really help people learn how to use the software effectively and easily. And uh, because I'm able to show a lot of content with this very simple system. And <clears throat> we're sizing three things at once, the pipes, the tank, and the pump. So what are some ways that you would be able to easily size a system like this? Well, uh, there's a duplicate special where you can easily try different sizes. There's a design alerts feature that will alarm you when various uh, violations occur for maximum or minimum values. And finally, the goal seeking control module can be used to automatically change your liquid height in order to get the suction pressure that you want. So let me go ahead and jump into this Fathom model here really quick. So here's a starting point where uh, if you note the checklist, I have all three green check marks and a green status light. I can run my model and get results. So if I was to click on the green arrow that points to the right in order to run my model, I would run it and get results and I would check those requirements and then I would go back to the drawing board. But there's a much, much easier way to do this. So what I'll do here, I'm going to turn on my grid. That way things stay aligned nicely. And I'm going to start by duplicating my system. So I'm going to do Control A to select everything on the workspace. And then after that, I'll go to Edit and then Duplicate Special. So the reason why I'm using Duplicate Special is to in increment my pipe and junction numbers in an intelligent fashion. <clears throat> so if I duplicate things in this way rather than just doing copy and paste or a regular duplication is it makes it really easy for me to correlate uh, my pipes and junctions. So once I duplicate my system here, I can uh, move it up and over right to there. So the reason why I use duplicate special is because it helps me understand that Pipe number two corresponds with pipe 102. Uh, pipe four corresponds with pipe 104. So that's why I would use a duplicate special is when I'm reviewing my results, it makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on. So after I get that second system on in the workspace, I'm going to select it again, and I'm going to duplicate it a third time with another duplicate special. So I'll drag this down. And I'll put this uh, right here. All right. So now I have uh, three individual piping systems that are running completely independently of each other on the same workspace. 
So the reason why this is effective and useful is because I can then go in and select these pipes on the workspace, and I can do a very quick global edit to change the pipe size. Again, I don't know the pipe size here, so in the original system at the very top, I started off with a pipe size of four inches in diameter for the nominal size, and then, so here's my four inch system, and then here I globally changed these pipes to be five inches in diameter, and then finally at the bottom, I'm gonna change these pipes to be six inches in diameter. So this helps speed up your process for sizing a little bit, because rather than using just one system on one workspace, running your model, checking your results, and continually iterating on that over and over again, you can run all three systems at the same time, and you can figure out which ones meet your requirements. Now, after I have my three systems on the workspace, they're all fully defined. I could still run my model, but I don't want to do that yet. The next thing I want to do is I want to quickly and easily figure out which piping system is within my velocity requirements. So my velocities in the system have to stay less than six feet per second. So the way that I'm going to accomplish that is by creating a design alert. So there's a key difference between regular Fathom and then the automated network sizing module is in Fathom, it's a guess and check. And so I use design alerts to alert me if a pressure is greater than a certain maximum or if a uh, velocity is above a certain level. So in order to create those design alerts, I'll go to tools <coughs> and then design alerts and then I'll create my new design alert here. I'll call this six feet per second max velocity. After you create a design alert, you would specify what type of object it relates to, either pipes or junctions. And then you would choose your parameters. So this will be velocity, the maximum value is six feet per second. I'm gonna apply this design alert to all of the pipes in my system. And you don't have to do it that way, but you can, and I'm gonna do it that way in this model. So now I have one single design alert. And uh, when I do this type of model here, I actually have several different scenarios that I run. And I get into doing expansions where there's additional flow paths, multiple heat exchangers, multiple pumps. And later on in the model, I would typically do additional design alerts for uh, heat exchanger flow requirements. So if I was to get to that point, what I would do is I would create another design alert and I would use heat exchangers and I would put the design alert on the flow rate. That way it would quickly flag my attention if a uh, flow rate uh, through a heat exchanger was not above a certain minimum. So design alerts are incredibly helpful in the model. So I've got my one design alert, I click OK, and what this will do is when Fathom runs the model here, it's going to yell at me with big red warnings in the results if any of these piping systems sees a velocity that is higher than six feet per second. That makes it quick and easy for me to figure out which pipe sizes are not gonna cut it for my requirements. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to size my tanks. So in order to size my tanks, imagine, if you will, where you would take these three systems where you've got four inch, five inch, and six inches in diameter. You start off with guessing a uh, liquid surface elevation for your reservoirs, run your model, check the pressure at the pump at each of these points here, and then go back in and change each tank individually over and over again until you find the appropriate tank liquid height that gives you five PSIG suction pressure at each of these pumps. That'd be a real pain, wouldn't it? Well, that's where we have our goal seeking control module, which will automate that whole process for you, makes it really super easy. So in order to turn on the add-on modules, there's multiple ways that you can do it. One way 
you can click on this button right here to the left of the status site. The other way that you can turn on our add-on modules is to go to the tools menu and then click on activate modules. And these are the different modules that I could potentially activate. You have to have a license for them, obviously. And so the license is separate. You have to get a license for GSC, XTS, etc. But the unique thing is no separate installation is necessary for the add-on modules. So when you install Fathom by itself, it actually installs the modules as well. So all you need to do is just get a license for the module, and then you can turn them on, and you can access those additional powerful capabilities. So here's what I would do with GSC is I'll turn on my GSC module, click OK, and now I have my Goal Seeking Control Manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set variables on the liquid heights for my reservoir. So I'll click on New Variable, and then I would change my excuse me, my junction height to reservoir. And then I want to change the liquid level for reservoir J number one. So that's how there is to it. <clears throat> After I create my, my first variable, I need two other variables because I've got two other systems right here. So once you, uh, if you've got the same variables over and over, simply select one of your rows here and then just duplicate the variable. That way, all you need to do is change the number. This is another reason why I use the duplicate special, is it makes it really easy for me to figure out which number I need to use to change my variables. And then you'll see the same thing with my goals. So all my variables are created. Now I need to do my goals. So my goal is to achieve a pressure equal to 5 PSIG, I need to change the units to PSIG, and where do I need this goal of 5 PSIG to be met? It needs to happen right at the pump suction, right here. So the location of where that would be is the outlet of pipe P2, okay? So I would go in here, and I would change the object location to the outlet, and then I specify the pipe number, which is P2, and there we go. So that's my first goal. Now I can select this row and duplicate it twice, and then all I need to do is change the number. And there we go. So I got pipe 2, 102, and 202. So now when I click OK, you're going to see a little V and G by the labels. The V stands for variable. The G stands for goal. So that means that you have a variable and a goal for each of those objects. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have my output control customized uh, in a certain way. So I want to show my nominal size and my velocity. I'm showing my pressures in terms of PSIG. Uh, I actually don't need the temperatures in this particular case because I'm not going to be doing heat transfer calculations. Let me make sure that I've actually turned heat transfer off. Temperature is going to be 65 degrees. Okay. <coughs> so now I have everything specified, and I have the output that I want to see in the output window. So now when I go to run my model here, very, very quickly, in less than a second, it's going to figure out exactly which conditions I need. So if I go to my output window, this is my list of results in tabular format. So this is why design alerts are really useful is because these warning messages are telling me that I have velocities that are above the design alert level for these individual pipes, which is above six feet per second. Not only does it tell you that in the uh, big red warnings, it also will highlight the violations for you down in the output window. So for all the velocities, I've got 12.6, 8.02. And so those velocities are above my six foot per second maximum. So this makes it very clear and quick and easy to see 
that my five inch and four inch diameter piping systems are not going to work. I have to use six inches in diameter. So if I use a six inch in diameter system, then my velocities stay less than six feet per second. So I've sized my pipes. I need six inches in diameter. What about my pumps? Well, if I go to my pump summary, you can see exactly how much total dynamic head you need for the design flow rate for each of your pumps. So if you go with a six inch diameter system, the pipe that corresponds with that is J203. So you need 245 feet of head and a uh, probably a 45 horsepower pump that can deliver those conditions for you. So now I have my pump operating point. I could size my pump and select a pump curve that will match that. Now I'm not gonna show you that today. That's a bit outside the scope of this webinar. Uh, the last thing I wanna show is the uh, goals. How do we know that our uh, goals were met? Well, if you go to the GSC goals tab, you can see that you're getting exactly, well, almost exactly, five PSIG at each of the pumps. And so in order to get five PSIG at the suction for each of your pumps, this tab for the GSC variables tells you what your liquid heights need to be. So for a six inch diameter system, I need a 25 foot tank. So I'd probably get a 30 foot tank just in case. So I have now sized my tank, I've sized my pipes, and I can size my pump and get a pump curve now that I know my operating point. Now, let me go back to the presentation really quick because this just highlights what I have just done. I duplicated the system. I did my design alerts, my GSC variables, my GSC goals. Here are the results that I just showed you. <clears throat> the question or the thing is, <clears throat> we have determined our required pipe size, which is six inches. We've sized our pump as well as our tank heights. But is this the best we can do? I mean, you could stop here and you could deliver this system design to your client and things would work. But is it possible to give them an even better design than this? And the answer is yes, okay? Uh, there are different ways that you can automatically size your piping system in order to uh, minimize your cost or minimize your uh, piping weight. So here's the beauty of what the automated network sizing module will do is rather than you having to go in here and either manually change your pipe sizes or duplicate your system like how I've done, then uh, the automated network sizing module will automatically change your pipe sizes and then it'll tell you exactly which size you need. So it will save you incredible amounts of time and effort. Now, obviously, it didn't take me very long for this little system. This is a really small, simple piping system where you could easily do this by hand but there still is significant benefit to using the automated sizing capabilities, even for a small teeny little system like this. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So uh, getting back into our presentation here, let's talk about sizing your system intelligently, not just sizing your pipes to meet your design requirements, but let's throw some additional intelligence in there. We know we can easily meet our design requirements, and in the previous webinar that I did last week, uh, which FYI, if you do not know where you can find our previously recorded webinars on our website, let me show you where it is. If you go to AFT.com under Learning Center, go to Webinars and then Webinar Library. What you would need to do is fill in this form here with your basic information. And then once you go into the webinar page, you can see all of the previously recorded webinars that we've done for Fathom and then Arrow and Impulse. So the cost calculation webinar that I'm talking about is this one right here. Now, after today's webinar, this uh, particular webinar that I've circled, um, that is going to actually uh, move down below. So this is the introductory webinar that we did for Fathom a while ago. 
this is always going to be the most recent webinar, so this constantly pushes it down every time we do a new webinar for Fathom. So if you look for the how much will your system cost you, that's the cost calculation webinar that will show you how to do cost calculations. Now, should we do the bare minimum as engineers or should we go above and beyond? Well, it's good to go above and beyond, and what that means is to not just meet your design requirements, but try and figure out ways to save your clients some money. So minimizing costs requires significant amounts of iteration. In order to meet the design requirements, improve your reliability, uh, and increase your profit margins, and reduce your costs and improve efficiencies. So how, does, how do you know once you've actually found the true minimum cost of your piping system? <laughs> well, simply by running out of time where you basically pick the lowest cost system that you've found up to that point. So because time and resources are lacking, it's difficult to determine what the true possible uh, best design is. A good design that works, certainly, but is that really the best design? What if you could actually give your clients the best? How many more projects would they give to you, and how many more referrals to other plants would they give when you give them the best design every single time you can show them how it is actually the best? So in reality, thousands of iterations are needed in order to determine the uh, best configuration, and that's really related to the uh, significant number of variables that you can change. And so that's where AFT Mercury and AFT Titan come in. AFT Mercury and Titan have been based upon the hydraulic engines of Fathom and Arrow. So what did AFT Mercury and Titan do? They would allow you to model and design your pipe network systems. So let's say that it was back in the day where we were at Fathom version 7 and Arrow version 4. Now we're at Fathom 10 and Arrow 7. But if we were at Fathom version 7 and Arrow version 4, if you had Mercury or Titan, you wouldn't need Fathom or Arrow. So Mercury is Fathom on performance enhancers. Titan is Arrow on performance enhancers. So if you had Mercury and Titan, you didn't need Fathom and Arrow because it could do everything Fathom and Arrow could do and the automated pipe sizing capabilities. So Mercury and Titan will automatically size the best configuration of pipe and component sizes in order to minimize your initial or your life cycle cost or your size or your weight. You can apply multiple design constraints or requirements like uh, maximum velocity, minimum pressure, maximum pressure, uh, NPSH, things like that. And then you can automatically size your system based upon different things like uh, simply your materials and installation. So there's uh, that would be called uh, minimizing your initial costs. Or you can minimize your life cycle costs. So your life cycle cost would include your recurring costs for energy and maintenance. <clears throat> so these are some excellent technical papers I've included links to on our website that you can read about how Mercury was used. And if you were to read the middle one right here, uh, where AFT Mercury was used for a seawater pumping system for Saudi Aramco, you'll see how simply by changing the wall thickness throughout the pipeline, Mercury was able to save that project $100 million and eliminated the need for a whole additional pump station. So it can dramatically save tons and tons of money in your design. So definitely something to look into doing. Okay, so let's consider an example here. So let's consider a very simple piping system, one that's even more simple than the first example that I illustrated for you. We're going to consider a pipeline that is 1,000 feet long, which requires 8,000 gallons per minute. So our pump flow capacity is 8,000 gallons per minute, and we're going to shoot for a pump efficiency of 65%. We're going to assume a friction factor of 0 
we're going to assume a energy cost of 10 cents per kilowatt hour and we're going to assume that the piping system will stay online for five years so or just what does it look like in the first five years of operation so scenario number one we want to determine what pipe size we need in order to minimize the initial non-recurring cost so that means i'm trying to minimize the material and installation costs up front okay so smaller pipe sizes <clears throat> scenario number two would be to allow your minimum pipe sizes to be maybe a little bit larger because the goal is to actually minimize based upon the entire life cycle cost so this type of sizing is going to consider material installation and pump energy costs now the fact of the matter is this is you can do this really easily for a simple system like this in a spreadsheet so i've already got that open here let me pull my spreadsheet over okay so let's walk through this so here i have my conditions where i've got my thousand foot long pipe my assumed friction factor pump efficiency, flow rate, energy cost, system life, okay? So those are my input conditions. I also have included cost for material and installation of my piping from four inches in diameter up to 36 inches in diameter. In addition to that, I've included cost for my pumps. So based upon different levels of horsepower, I'm going to specify my material and installation costs as a function of horsepower accordingly. So based upon the horsepower that I, need, that I need, that dictates the cost of material and installation for the pump that I'll have to account for. So all we're doing here is we're simply creating a table where we're trying these different sizes, four inches all the way up to 36 inches. <coughs> We can easily calculate what the dollar cost per foot is for that range of sizes. Here's our flow rate, which is the same for all of our different pipe sizes. And then we calculate our velocities, our head gradient, our overall head loss. And then what we can do is we can come up with the total pipe cost. We can also calculate the total pump cost based upon the required horsepower needed for each of the different pipe sizes. And then we total together the costs in various, va uh, various ways. Now, the easiest way to understand this is by plotting out our costs. So in these two graphs down here, I've plotted my piping cost for material and installation and then the uh, total. And then this right here plots out the pump costs for material and installation as well. So those are the cost plots there. And you can see how obviously your uh, pipe size, uh, as your pipe sizing increases, your cost goes up. As your horsepower increases, your pump costs go up, obviously. But what does that mean? Well, if we scroll over to this graph right here, this is the plot for sizing our piping system based upon just the initial cost. So all we care about is the material and installation costs for our pipes and our pumps. So when we calculate, <coughs> excuse me, when we calculate the total uh, costs here for piping, and then the costs for pumping, and then the total of these together, we are plotting those against the pipe size. So when we look at this graph down below, we can see here that the blue line, this is our cost for the piping increasing with increasing diameter. However, for your pumps, as you increase your diameter, your velocities and pressure losses dramatically decrease that's why you have such a dramatic decrease in cost as your size increases. So bigger pipe size, less horsepower that you need for your pumps. 
when you total those two costs together for your piping costs, material and installation, as well as your pump costs for material and installation, you get the green line. And as you can see here, the green line initially decreases dramatically, where uh, beyond this, you have, for really small diameters, extremely high costs. And then, as your pipe diameter increases, your cost decreases to a certain point, and then it begins to increase again. So what we're looking for when we're designing a system is we're looking for this. We are looking for what that minimum cost is, and that's our pipe size. So based upon that minimum cost right there, we can find that the 16-inch diameter pipe is going to give us the minimum cost of $108,000. <clears> so that's pretty good. 16 inches in diameter is what we need for a minimum pipe cost, $108,000. However, there's scenario number two. Scenario number two is to minimize your life cycle costs. So it needs to account for energy costs as well. That is the graph on the right. So if I scroll over a little bit further here, we see a little bit different of a graph. So we've got the same pipe cost increasing with increasing diameter. We have the same pump energy cost where it decreases with increasing diameter. And then here's the energy cost. So this is the new plot that was not plotted here. So our energy costs here decrease dramatically as your size increases. So now when you include your energy costs in your total here, the green line actually shifts to the right a little bit. So we have a new minimum. The actual minimum for when you account for energy cost is based upon a 24 inch diameter pipe. So what this tells us is if we want to minimize the overall life cycle cost in five years, we need to use a 24 inch diameter pipe. Now let's do some comparisons here. Let me go back up to the table. I've highlighted for convenience the 16 inch diameter results and the 24 inch diameter results. <clears throat> so let's look at the uh, non-recurring costs for uh, these two parameters. So here's our 16 inch diameter pipe. Here's our 24 inch diameter pipe. The material and installation cost for pipes and pumps is $108,000 for 16 inch diameter pipe. If we go up uh, eight inches in diameter, if we go up to a 24 inch diameter pipe, it's $142,000. So there's a difference of about $30,000 there where we're spending a little bit more money up front. Uh, you could figure out what that percentage is on your own. Uh, I'm not going to do that math in my head. But here's the other thing that we want to compare is the energy cost. Look at the energy cost comparisons. If we were to use a 16-inch diameter pipe, in five years, the energy cost is $289,000 versus if we use the 24-inch diameter pipe, we're only spending $38,000 in five years. So that is a dramatic amount of savings in your costs over the long run. So yes, you are spending more money up front, but wouldn't it make sense to minimize your pipe uh, costs based upon life cycle? Because if you compare everything together, you're spending about $400,000 in five years for a 16 inch diameter pipe versus $180,000 for a 24 inch diameter pipe. So obviously you'd want to go with the 24 inch diameter pipe. That's the best case available. However, there's budgetary restrictions. So, you know, maybe your budget is $115,000. Well, what you could do is you could say, uh, give me the best energy cost for a initial cost limit of $115,000. So uh, that's an option that you have. 
So here's what this would look like if you did this in a spreadsheet for a really simple system. Now, let's jump into how you would do this in AFT Fathom. Give me one second here. All right, let me open up Fathom. And I'm going to uh, open up my model. Okay, so here's the same system that we had before as our spreadsheet. So in this case here, I'm uh, modeling water at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's our density and viscosity and whatnot. And then I have my pump, which I am modeling as a sizing option where I'm specifying a fixed full pump of 8,000 gallons per minute. And here's the nominal efficiency that we're assuming of 65%. And then if we take a look at our piping, we've got 1,000 feet of piping. So we're going to put the pump right in the middle. So we're, we've got 500 feet of piping. We're going to start off with a guess of 4 inches in diameter. And then we have our discharge pipe, which is going to be the rest of the 500 uh feet of piping for four inches as well we've got some boundary conditions we're going thousand foot liquid surface elevation with zero pipe depth to the same conditions here so there's no change in elevation very 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 simple system here so i want to use the automated network sizing module in order to automatically figure out these particular costs that I need. So let's do this. In order to turn on the automated network sizing module, which you'd have to have a license for, keep in mind that this is in beta phase. So uh, there's still a little bit more development going on. Uh, so keep that in mind in my demonstration here. So I'm going to click on this button just to the left of the status light to activate the modules. And I'm going to check the box to turn on the automated network sizing module here. So I click OK, and that turns it on. So when we turn on the automated network sizing module, there is a brand new sizing uh, primary window. <coughs> so now we have six primary windows versus the five that we already know and are used to. So let's go to the sizing window. The sizing primary window will walk you through each step in order to automatically size your pipes. So here's what this looks like. I go to my sizing panel uh, or my sizing primary window and you have some different options. So the thing to focus on is the bottom panel right here. These are each of the different steps that you need to accomplish in order to automatically size your pipes. So the first thing is sizing objective, and then we have sizing assignments, candidate sets, design requirements, et cetera. I'm gonna talk about all these things uh, in a basic form for this example. On April 3rd, 2019, where I do the next webinar, I'm gonna show a more advanced system, and we'll dig into some more depth with each of these different panels down here. So initially, uh, here's something that is counterintuitive to what we're used to, is when I turn on the ANS module, there is a new checklist item. It is define all sizing input. And so when I uh, turn on ANS, here's something that's really odd, is the define all sizing input is actually checked off and completed which is similar to how your solution control is already checked off and completed. That does seem kind of weird, but here's the thing, is when you first turn on the ANS module, you can still run your model right now and get results. So if I ran my model right now, uh, I could get results based upon four inches in diameter. <laughs> like I said, this is in beta phase, so uh, this is supposed to be able to run. Uh, I Something must be uh, not letting that run like it's supposed to. Uh, so 
everything is already completed until you make changes to each of these individual panels. <clears throat> so let's go through this. The first thing is your sizing objective. What are you basing your automated sizing off of? Are you trying to size your pipes uh, based upon weight or maybe fluid and weight or flow volume or maybe monetary cost? So that's your sizing objective. So the default option is to size your pipes based upon weight. So if you did not have this cost information, simply for diam uh, material and insulation as a function of diameter, then what you would want to use is the weight option to minimize your piping weight. Minimizing your piping weight correlates very well with minimizing your cost. So even if you don't have detailed cost information, you could still automatically size your system simply by minimizing the piping weight. Now there's different ways to do it. You can perform sizing. That uses the ANS module. The other option is to calculate the weight, do not size. Let's talk about this in terms of cost. So I've turned on my objective to minimize cost. So if I want to perform the sizing, it's going to automatically change my pipe size in order to minimize cost. If I select the middle option, what this will do is it's simply going to calculate the cost based upon the system that is or defined right here. So when you choose the option to simply uh, calculate the cost, do not size, this is just like you're doing a regular cost calculation example with Fathom, okay? So if you choose that option, you're just doing basic cost calculations. Now, if, you were to, if I was to go one step further and click on this option, do not size, what this is equivalent to is a very basic fathom run. So if you were to choose do not size, it's not going to calculate any cost. It's not going to size your pipes. It's simply running the fathom model as it is just like normal. So that's what do not size means. So obviously when you're using ANS, you're typically going to be doing performing sizing. Now, there's different ways that you can minimize your cost here. So one way is to size based upon initial cost. So if I click on that particular option there, if I click on size for initial cost, all this is going to do is it's going to size my pipes based upon <coughs> the material and installation cost of my pipes and my pump. As you can see here, we are ignoring the cost of energy and maintenance at that time. So this is like we were doing the spreadsheet where I don't care about what the energy costs are. But that's important to not ignore that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size for initial cost, and I want to calculate my energy cost as well. So this is just like the spreadsheet where not only or where I'm going to try and minimize my cost based upon the initial portion, but I still want to know how much does the energy cost cost me. All right, so now I am sizing based upon material and installation for pipes and pumps, but I'm calculating my energy costs. So this is going to be over a five-year system life, and my energy cost is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's how I'm going to do my initial sizing. After I complete this, the next step is to move on to my size slash cost assignments. So this is where I tell Fathom which specific pipes do I want to size. Let's say this pipe had to stay fixed as it is and I only wanted to size this pipe here. Then this is where you can pick and choose which pipes you want to allow to change and which pipes you want to keep the same. So I'm going to choose to always include both pipes in the sizing. That way, both pipe P1 and P2 will change their pipe size for these calculations. Now, if I only do this, 
What Fathom could end up doing is it could end up changing both of these two pipes independently of each other. So it might find that P, P1 needs to be a certain diameter, maybe that's D1, and then P2 could be a completely different diameter. So if all I do is go into this panel here and say automatically size, and I don't do anything else, then they could end up being different diameters. But in my case here, I want them to be the same diameter. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a common uh, size group right here. So in order to create a common size group, what I would do is I would click on New, and I'm going to create a new common size group. I'll just call this Pipeline. I'll call it Full Pipeline. Okay, so now I have a common size group. <clears throat> this is where I want to tell which specific pipes I want to have the same resulting pipe size. So this will potentially reduce the number of variables that can change in my system here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make things uh, simple by clicking all, and then I'm going to... Uh, make these both i'm going to move these two pipes to be in the full pipeline looks like i didn't spell pipeline right but that's fine so now when i go to automatically size the pipes it's going to size them together they will in the end have the same diameter now for my uh, i don't know what happened there let's see There we go. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could include my uh, pump sizing, but uh, right here, I'm just going to include the cost for my pumps. Next is candidate sets. So candidate sets is where I specify which groups of pipe materials I'm allowed to use for my pipe sizes. <clears throat> so if I go in here, I'm initially using steel, and I've got this whole range from four inches in diameter all the way up. Well, all that I have cost information for is for steel pipe from 4 inches to 36 inches in diameter. So what I'm going to do is on the candidate sets, I'm going to click on new, and I'll call this steel piping I can use. And what I'm going to choose is my material. So this is going to be steel pipe. And I'm going to do all my pipe sizes within the uh, standard schedule. Actually, not all of them. I'm going to add this over. And then there are several pipes I'm going to ignore. So I'm going to ignore all my pipes up to 4 inches. So I'm going to delete those from the list. I'm not going to do 5 inches in diameter. And I'm going to delete everything from 38 inches in diameter and up. So this reduces the amount of pipe sizes that ANS is going to try in order to size my system. So now, once I pick a candidate set, these are the pipes that Fathom ANS is going to try. And then these are, uh, I'm going to uh, link those pipe sizes to my candidate set. All right. The next thing is design requirements. So if I had velocity requirements or pressure requirements, I could specify that here. But in this example, there were no requirements. It didn't specify I had to minimize and keep my velocities above a certain level. It just wanted to figure out straight what's the best uh, option. So I can size my system based upon no design requirements. Just let Fathom figure out the best. Don't constrain it to anything. So I'm leaving this blank. The next thing is to assign cost databases. So what I need to do is I need to get this cost information for my piping and my pump into Fathom. That way it can calculate the costs and size my system accordingly. And that's really easy to do. So the first thing I need to do is in order to create a cost database, it has to relate to an engineering database. I talked about this in the cost calculation webinar, so make sure you watch that webinar that I referred to earlier today, and you'll learn how to do that. 
<clears throat> so what I'm going to do is in my pump here, if I have pump costs, I actually have to add this pump to a database. So I simply define the information however I want, and then I click OK. And I'm going to click on database and add that component to database. I'll call this pump for webinar sizing. Now, here's why I'm doing this is because when I want to take these costs and create a cost database, I have to uh, point those to a specific pump. So I now go to database <clears throat> and then cost database, and I'm going to create a new cost database. This is really easy. First, you have to pick a engineering database that you're going to associate your costs with. So again, watch the previous webinar that I did, and you'll learn more about what that means. So when I added that pump to my uh, database, it's in my local user database. So this is the database that it's going to uh, tie the costs to. So I'll click Select, and then I'll give it a description. This will be called uh, Pump Material and Installation Cost. Now, I'm going to specify which junction I'm going to use this for. So I have two different junctions that I can apply these costs to. I'm going to use this one right here, pump for webinar sizing. So now I'm going to use cost tables. So this is how you can easily put in your cost information. So I'm going to do a new table, <coughs> call it pump material cost. I'm going to base my cost on power. And all I need to do is go in here and simply copy this data and then go back into Fathom. And I'm going to paste it in. Now, here's the thing is uh, when Fathom is changing the pipe size, it's determining different horsepowers. So when it figures out that I need a, let's say that I need a, you know, 28 horsepower pump in order to deliver the flow requirements. I don't have 28 horsepower in here, and you probably couldn't buy a 28 horsepower pump. So you're limited to specific horsepower values. So that's where we would need to do a discrete table. So if I go down here and I click on discrete for pump power, it's going to only use... <clears throat> anything that is uh, closest in these ranges. So this is my pump material cost. Now I'm going to do a pump uh, installation cost. So I'll call it pump installation. So I have a second table. I go in and I copy my pump power, and then I paste that into the table on the left, and then I collect my installation data, and I paste it into the table on the right. Now, I need to go in and specify this cost table for each of the junctions. So now, I select my pump for webinar sizing. I'm going to do two new costs. So I'll call this pump material, pump installation. And then the cost type for this one is going to be installation. So you have to choose which cost you're using. And then the cost information comes from my table of costs. So this simplifies things for me. And then here I'll use pump material cost and then pump installation cost. <clears throat> now save this as a cost database. So this will be called uh, pump material and installation cost. Now I know that I've gone over an hour. Just hang with me. I'm almost done here. If you need to head out, that's perfectly fine. I understand. You will be sent a link to this webinar that you can watch later uh, later today or sometime early next week. And that way, uh, if you need to, uh, if you want to watch the end, just pick back up after uh, about an hour and 50 or hour and 10 minutes and you can watch the rest. But I'm going to keep going here until I'm done. I've got maybe about 10 more minutes here. So I've got my pump cost. Once I create my pump cost, I go into my pump window. And then I would choose my database that I'm using. So this is going to use my pump for webinar sizing. Now I need to do my piping costs. So I'm going to go to database and cost database. I'm going to create a new cost database for pipes. So I would choose 
my steel pipe material because that's the engineering database that my pipe costs are going to relate to. So this is going to be called uh, steel uh, pipe material and installation costs. And I'm going to do pipe materials. Now, there's a really easy way to do this. I showed you in the previous cost calculation webinar, so I'm going to just do this really quick here. I'm going to sort my piping information based upon material, then type or schedule, and then size. Because I'm going to do my costs based upon only standard schedule steel. So this is all I'm doing. So I'm going to click on the standard uh, type. And I'm going to export that to Excel, and this is the data that's going to get exported. This makes it really easy to bring in your cost information. So I'm going to export this to a spreadsheet. So I'll call this uh, steel pipe material uh, and installation costs. And that's going to export this to a spreadsheet, <clears throat> which doesn't take too long. And then once it gets exported to the spreadsheet, I'm going to copy and paste my data right here into the spreadsheet. So now it's done exporting. So I go to where I save that table and I'm opening up the spreadsheet here. There it is. So this is where I'm going to plug in those costs. Now there's a lot of costs I or a lot of sizes I don't care about. So I'm deleting all the sizes up to four inch I'm deleting five inches in diameter. I'm deleting everything after 38 inches in diameter. So now I go in here and I'm going to copy my material and installation cost. I'm going to paste it right in like that. And then I save my model or save my spreadsheet. And now I simply go back into Fathom and then I just re-import that data. So I'm going to re-import that cost data, and this is going to populate my costs for me. This is amazing. So watch what this is going to do. Um, there we go. Cost data is imported. <clears throat> so here's my four-inch cost. So I've got material on the left, installation on the right. So I've got four-inch, six inches diameter, eight inches, ten inches, twelve inches, etc. So now. My cost database is created. I just need to save it. I'll call it pipe material and installation costs. So now if I go to the sizing panel and I go to assign cost databases, this is where I click on my pipes and I'm going to apply my steel material and installation pipe costs for pipes. And then for pumps, I'm going to use my pump material. Now, I'm almost done. I just go to my sizing method. There's different ways that you can do your sizing. I'm going to do a discrete sizing because, again, I don't want Fathom to figure out I need a seven, uh, seven and a half inch diameter. So I'm going to pick from a discrete list of sizes. And that discrete list is the candidate sets. So this is the list of pipe sizes that can be used, nothing more. So now all of that information is set up. I'm going to go to my initial cost right here, and I'll set my automated sizing to network. So I just go in, and everything should be all set up for that. Monetary cost, I'm going to do this uh, five years. 10 cents per kilowatt hour. I'm going to include, or I'm going to include my cost of the pump. Uh, candidate sets, make sure everything's all set up here. Cost databases. That is good to go. All right. So I run my sizing. <clears throat> Hang on a sec. Let's see.
He must have missed something along the way. There we go. All right. So look at that. It didn't even take a second, and the discrete sizing calculations are complete. So let's take a look at the output here. So uh, I started with too small diameter of a pipe. So let me boost this up a bit. Let's start at let's start at ten inches. So your starting point does matter just a little bit. All right, let's try this again here. Okay. Hang on, I must have messed something up in here. Just going through. Well, <laughs> I don't know what I did. It was working before I did the webinar, and I must have uh, missed something. And um, I'm not sure I went where I went wrong. Well, I suppose I get a little bit of grace because, again, this is in beta phase, and uh, I must have done something where. Um, well, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Okay, I'm going to end the webinar here. Uh, and so um, the main point of today's webinar was to illustrate, you know, why we're doing this and how we're doing this. And you're going to see a much better example in the next webinar on April 3rd on uh, how to do the automated sizing calculations. So I will fix this model and figure out where I went wrong and what I messed up. And I will start off the next webinar with this example. So be sure that you watch the next webinar and I'll finish off on this example. And then I'll demonstrate how to automatically size a much more complicated system because this is really quick and easy. The spreadsheet shows that you can do this very simply by hand, but imagine trying to create this massive spreadsheet for a really complicated piping network. So that's where the beauty of ANS is really lying. So, uh, and really, really helpful. So stay tuned for that webinar, and uh, you'll be able to see both systems. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in uh, the next week and a half. So thank you all very much for your time today. Uh, take care and have a wonderful weekend.